Hey, Miles here at Tactile Hive. If you're interested in finding out how to sight in or zero your rifle or your pistol if you use iron sights, this is the video for you. So you're a newer shooter, you're unfamiliar if your firearms are sighted in or zeroed. When people pertain to having your firearms zeroed, they're referring to making sure that whatever you're aiming at, your point of aim, is going to match with your point of impact. So whatever you're looking at or aiming at, your bullet is going to actually hit there, assuming all of your fundamentals are good. So what I have here are two different pistols. I have a SIG P365 with fixed iron sights and a Bull Armory race gun, which has adjustable iron sights. And I'll talk about both, but I will also talk to you about how to sight in a rifle with iron sights. Yes, I do have a red dot here, but we're just gonna be talking about the iron sights here. Before we sight in our pistols or our rifles, we need to determine the zero distance. I'm not gonna dive too much into that. Most people are going to zero their pistols and rifles at 25 yards, mainly because indoor ranges usually go up to 25 yards. And what that means is that when you are shooting at something from 25 yards away, wherever your iron sights are lined up at, at 25 yards, that's where your bullet will impact. That's where your bullet's going to hit. Now, the closer you get to the target or the further you're away from 25 yards, there might be slight deviations. But I don't wanna go into the weeds right now. Just understand that if you wanna make sure you're going to be hitting accurately, you do need to start off with a zero. And 25 yards is, again, very common among shooters. I've set up a target downrange, 25 yards. When you are zeroing, you'll wanna use paper for Demonstration purposes, I'm using a steel silhouette. And really a lot of the learning here is going to happen right here, what I'm talking about. It's not really the target. What we want though with the target when you're shooting paper is you're gonna put a very small target on your cardboard backer. Maybe it's a one inch paster. It could be a one inch circle, one inch square, whatever it is. That is what you're trying to shoot. All of your bullets should hit that mark. And I'll talk about how we're gonna approach it, the process. So let's start off with fixed iron sights on my P 365. Now, if you have a Glock or any other striker fired pistol or a lot of handguns will have fixed iron sights. Typically speaking, with iron sights, you really can't do anything in terms of adjustments when we're talking about up and down or elevation. You can only adjust left and right or as referred to as windage. When we start off with fixed iron sights, you just want to make sure that the front sight is on the center of your barrel, your slide. Right? You don't want it to be veering to the left or to the right. Just make sure it's centered. Once you do that, most of the work is just going to be done with the rear sight. So in order to sight in or zero your pistol, making sure your point of aim is going to be matched up with your point of impact, you are going to need a few things. If you're just starting out, I don't recommend you do this freestyle, meaning you don't have any kind of support, you're just standing. You want to use a bench, a barrel, something that you can rest on, and even a, a bag like this that is going to decrease the amount of wobble and movement, ensuring that you have a good zero when you go through this process. So having some kind of stabilizer, some bean bag, something like that is going to help. And also, you will need a sight pusher or any other kind of tool that is going to allow you to adjust your rear sight left and right. It's easiest to use a sight pusher, but some people will even just use a kind of like a hammer and a, a tool to push the, the sights. That's not as precise, so I do recommend a sight pusher. And there's a whole bunch out there. I'll leave a link to a few down below in the description, but there's, you know, they all accomplish the same job. They're going to move your rear sight left or right. With your sight pusher or your tools to adjust your rear sight and having some kind of support, you can use a lot of different things out there, options. You're gonna set up your target at your zero distance. Remember, we're using 20 five yards and I put a, a piece of tape one inch by one inch so that's going to be what I'm trying to hit and you're going to be aiming at that and trying to keep your gun steady as possible so you would load and make ready here and get into position where you're nice and comfortable and stable you could use a bench you don't have to use this setup any setup that is going to make sure you're very steady when you're taking those shots and you're gonna take three shots not rapid fire, and you want to be as precise as possible. 
I am going to, on purpose, make mistakes here. I'm gonna shoot way off. My gun is pretty much zeroed right now, but I'm going to shoot to one side on purpose. So I'll be here and I'm going to be, you will be aiming at the center, but I'm going to aim, pretend that I'm off here. So I'm gonna take three shots. All right, and then let's head down range and we'll talk about it a little bit. As you can see, my shots are off to the left. I even missed one shot. So one shot probably went over here. I am theoretically aiming at this. Now remember, as I mentioned, on purpose I'm shooting here because my gun is pretty much zeroed. So if my shots were to the left, and let's say the third one was over here, you see a consistency in the grouping. If all three shots were here, this basically means that I have to shift my sights to the right because my zero is off, right? My gun is not sighted in. When we are talking about fixed iron sights and where you can adjust the rear sight, remember this here. If I want my groupings to move to the right, I need to adjust my rear sight and push it to the right, okay? Let's take the opposite. If my shot my groups were here, let's say there was three shots. I was aiming here, but the three shots were here, right? Then I wanna push my rear sight to the left a little bit. Small adjustments. You would do small adjustments, then take another three shots, and then do the process until you get closer or zero, to you're, you're happy with your zero. We didn't talk about elevation here. Watch the video again that I linked to earlier. So that talks a little bit about holds, combat hold, center hold. But typically speaking, you should not have any issues with your elevation with fixed sights, right? You, you need to worry more about left and right. So we're gonna go back down range and we're gonna pretend that I use my sight pusher to move my rear sight to the right. Why? Because my shots are to the left. And you're always maintaining the same point of aim. We're always aiming here. We're not compensating. So if my shots were here, I'm not gonna aim over here to get my shots over here. We're going to adjust our sights to accomplish what we need to. So we're gonna go back down there, take three more shots, and then see what happens. Now remember, my gun is zeroed. Okay, but this is more hypothetical. We're going to now see, I'm going through the process, see where my next three shots are, and then we'll discuss what to do from there. I'm back at 25 yards, target down range. We are pretending that I adjusted my rear sight to account for what happened down range on the target. We know that our hits were too far to the left, so we want them to go right, so we move our rear sight to the right. Now I'm going to take three shots again, and we would go over the process, see where it's at on the target, and see if we have to make more changes. So I'm at a stable platform here. I'm gonna take three shots, nice and slow. All right, let's go down range and see where we're at. We're down range at the target and we can see we have Orion's belt here. So now we, we did it too much. We pushed the rear sight too much to the right and now we are off course, right? We're not right dead center where we wanna be. So now we would go back to adjusting our rear sight. This time, where do we push the rear sight? A little to the left. You might now want to remember how far you pushed your, your rear sight from left to right. This time we're just gonna go halfway and then we do the process again. We go back, we take three shots, and see if we're happy. If all of them are right here, we're not looking for keyholes here, particularly with combat sights, a carry gun, a, a compact gun. This is not a bullseye shooting gun or anything like that. You're just looking for a nice group here in the center. It doesn't have to be keyhole. So let's go back and uh, we'll, we'll pretend we're going through the process. We've just adjusted it a little bit more. Now let's see. We are back at the 25. We're pretending we now adjusted our rear sight a little bit to the left because we were too far right. And let's see where we're at now. We're going to get a stable platform and don't rush the shots. You're looking for position here. So now the shots have moved a little to the left. There was some human error there, so I'm gonna do it again. You can see them downrange, they have moved, but the elevation's off, that's me. I was just rushing the three shots, so I'm gonna do it again. And I'm pretty happy with this. The, the windage is good, the shots are pretty much in the center, but I'm gonna confirm because I know I made some errors here, human errors. All right, let's go downrange. Looking at the second set of three that I took where I wasn't rushing, that's, you know, I, I would be happy with that. So I would call this gun pretty much zeroed. Remember, not all of your shots, it's not like you're shooting this with a rifle 
and a red dot. Okay, it's not gonna be as precise at 25 yards with iron sights, but this I would be happy because the windage is pretty much in the center where I want it to be. There's nothing wild. I don't have wild shots up here or down here. Remember with fixed sights, typically you can only adjust left and right you shouldn't have any major elevation issues. If you do, remember, look at the combat hold and uh, center hold video that I talked about um, earlier. Now let's go back and let's quickly talk about adjustable iron sights. It's going to be much easier than using a sight pusher, but the process is pretty much the same. I have one of my race guns here and race guns with iron sights will typically have adjustable sights. So now you're gonna follow the same exact process. You would take three shots, see where your shots are at, but instead of using a sight pusher now, you can adjust everything here just with a you know, multi-tool where you are making adjustments to windage, left and right, but then also now with adjustable rear sights, on race guns or any, any iron sight where it's adjustable, you can also adjust elevation as well. And on the rear sights, it'll basically tell you which way to turn, left or right or uh, up or down to make these adjustments, windage or elevation. So it's very easy that you don't have to break out a tool, use some kind of a hammer or anything like that to adjust the rear sight. It's very easy, but the process is identical. You would start with good support, Take three shots, go down range, see where you are at. Okay, you are making sure to aim at the same point every single uh, iteration or set of three shots. Make your adjustments, come back, take three shots again until you've reached that point where you feel like your gun is zeroed and your shots are pretty much going where you want them to go. Now let's discuss how do you sight in or zero your rifle with iron sights. Remember, I do have my red dot here and I'm gonna talk about something kind of a shortcut here. Let's assume that you have a zeroed red dot on your rifle. We will be discussing how to zero or sight in red dots on your pistols and rifles. That'll be another video, but let's just assume that you already have a zeroed red dot, but you have not sighted in your iron sights. So what you would do is you would turn on your red dot because it's already zeroed. Okay, and you would look through the window of your red dot, put that dot exactly where you want to hit down range, and then you would adjust your rear sight and your front sight on your rifle so that it lines up perfectly with that red dot in the window. Here, it's kind of a shortcut because your red dot is zeroed, now you're just going to match it with your iron sights. And keep in mind that most rifle sights are going to be completely adjustable the rear sight is going to take care of windage. So this is more of your left and right. If your shots are to the left, to the right, kind of the same concept with iron sights here. If my shot, if my shots are to the left and I want to move them to the right, I'm going to move my rear sight to the right more because that's where I want my shots to go. And then vice versa. If my shots are far to the right and I want to move them to the left, I want to make sure I move my rear sight to the left. And most rear sights are going to give you instructions or basically tell you which way to turn the knobs in order to move left or right. So there's no confusion there. The front sight is going to take care of your elevation. And similar to the rear sight, there will be instructions which way to turn your front sight. So the front sights are typically going to have a front notch here that sticks out, kind of like a, a front sight on a pistol. And there will be guides here. If you need it to move up or move down, you can adjust it. In contrast to the rear sight though, your adjustments here on your front sight are going to be opposite. What do we mean by that? We already talked about if I want my shots to move more to the right, I'm going to adjust my rear sight more to the right. Just We, we already talked about that with pistols or vice versa, left, left. The front sight though is different. Okay, if my shots are low on target, I want to physically adjust my front sight post on my rifle to move up more. So if I take shots on that paster at 25 yards and my shots are low, the bullet holes are low, that means I want to bring my shots up. Okay, I want to bring them up. So what I need to do with the front sight post is bring it down. Okay, so it's the opposite. Right? And don't worry if you're confused, you can watch this video again. And so, you know, you're not going to be confused. And you can take this step by step. You can even watch this video at the range. So once again, if my shots are low, that means I need to bring up, you know, adjust my sights because I want to bring my shots up higher. So now you would adjust the front sight, bring it down until you have the right elevation. Now let's talk about the opposite here. If I'm shooting and my shots are higher, 
okay? They are higher than what I'm aiming. So I'm aiming at that paster, but my shots are two, three inches higher than that paster. Now I want my shots to go down, right? My, the bullet holes to be down. So I do the opposite here. I adjust the front sight and move the front sight up. It might sound confusing, might sound like a foreign language right now, but remember you can just rewatch this video. It's very simple. It is the opposite of the rear sight. And remember, this deals with elevation up and down. This deals with left and right. The process is the same here. You are going to create a stable platform, load your magazine, and then make sure you're stable, take your time, and you're gonna take three shots. You would line up your iron sights on the paster. Don't use your red dot. And one thing to keep in mind, just like the, your iron sights on your pistol, because you're using iron sights on your rifle, you probably are not going to keyhole those shots. It's not like using a red dot, okay? There's going to be, uh, you're not gonna be as precise with iron sights and just accept that, right? But we're looking for a decent sized group. So I'm going to demonstrate this, three shots, but you have the, you kind of have the idea here and you can go back to the video to understand what the adjustments are with your sights. Remember with rifles, your rear sight and your front sight are typically going to be fully adjustable. So you should be able to get the zero pretty easily and your bullet holes down range are gonna dictate where you need to move. I'm locked and loaded with my rifle, target 25 yards. We've established that's going to be the zero range we're using. Remember, there are different zero ranges that you can do 50 yards, 100 yards, but we're just going to discuss 25. And the process that we're doing right now would be exactly the same. You would just, the only difference is if I want to zero at 50, I would shoot at 50 yards or zero at 100, shoot at 100 yards. And just a quick aside, if you don't have 50 yards or 100 yards um, to zero at those distances, there are what are called zero targets, which you can shoot at 25 yards and then still mimic being at 50 or 100. But that's going into the weeds right now. We're just gonna stick with 25 yards. My iron sights, I haven't checked the zero in a long time, so this is going to be a good exercise and I'll make the adjustments live if I need to. I'm going to aim with my iron sights at that paster and have a stable platform and we'll see what happens. Okay. So I'm on safe and we're gonna take a look and see where the bullet holes are and if I need to make any adjustments. We're downrange and as you can see, the grouping is pretty consistent. There are three shots right on top of each other. I'm shooting with iron sights, so there, the deviation could just be human error. The iron sights could be zero there. Maybe I'm just moving a little bit. But if we wanted to be nitpicky and precise with our zero or our sighting in, I would adjust this, you know, do an adjustment again and kind of see if it moves it even closer or too far. If it's too far, then I want to adjust it back. The idea here is this. Let's understand this. Let's take a look at these three shots here. If I wanted to, knowing that I was aiming at the center and my shots are slightly to the right, I want to move it to the left. So what would I do with my rifle? I'm looking at the rear sight and I need to move the sight to the left. Physically, this rear sight has to move to the left, okay? Remember, if it is elevation now, it is the opposite. So let's assume that I want, I'm nitpicky here, and I'm not happy, you know, some of these shots are low. So now if I wanted to move this up, okay, up, we are now looking at the front sight post, and we would need to adjust the front sight and do the opposite. I want my shots to go higher. I'm going to decrease the height of this front sight, move it down, and that will push my shots up high, aiming at the same point of aim. There you guys have it. Now you know how to sight in your pistol or your rifle if you're using iron sights. Keep in mind there are different ways of doing this, but this is the basic idea. You are going to take three shots at your designated zero distance, see where you are, then make adjustments on your, your platform, whether it is a pistol or a rifle. Also consider the fact that you're not necessarily going to be super precise with iron sights. Do whatever you can to be as stable as possible so that you'll know that your zero is as precise as possible. If you shoot with a red dot, and that's gonna be a separate video where we're talking about how to zero with a red dot, you will be a little bit more precise with iron sights because of the thickness of the front sight, all that, and lining up the front sight and the rear sight, it can be a lot more difficult. So just expect it, you're not gonna keyhole your shots. It, it, it's unlikely. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And if you have any comments or questions, hit us up in the comments section below, and don't forget to subscribe. See you guys next time.